We are not only celebrating democracy, but we are also celebrating the watershed in our nation's history. All of us here and the multitude of our people at home must thank God for this day. A little while ago, I took a solemn oath before you and Almighty God to abide by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to discharge my duty faithfully to all our people without fear or fear. Like the electoral mandate the people of Lagos gave me on January 9, 1999, I regard the oath a sacred covenant. I swear before you and God once again that I shall respect the sanctity of this land. I swear and affirm that I shall live and abide by it during my time in office. As we celebrate, we need to pay tribute to the heroic effort of some Nigerians whose company Contributions made today possible. Young men and women of the press must come for special mission. They suffered arbitrary detention and harassment. They sacrificed a lot so that we can have today. Many of our other heroes are not here today. They died in the cause of the democratic struggle. I'm sure in their heavenly hopes, they also will be celebrating with us. Today, I say today, remember Chief Mashud, Kashima Wolawale Abiola, the large-hearted titan and the elected president our country never had. We must remember Alaja Kudira Abiola, a true heroine of our democratic struggle and the wife of Mashud Kasma Wabiola. We must remember for Alfred Rewani, a patriot and a democrat with a social and political conscience. Soldiers, while they were protesting the annulment of the 9th, June 12, 1993 election. We need to remember them and the families they left behind. I urge you, therefore, to stop all music. I urge you, therefore, to please stand up and accord all these departed Nigerian compatriots a minute silence. They all die so that we may have democracy, which we are celebrating today. Today, I shall announce our plan to immortalize all of them. I promise you, they will be immortalized in Lagos State. The celebration of democracy began in our state a week ago, and it continues. Even after this event, we have been rejoicing in the hope that today we truly mark a turning point in our lives. We have been rejoicing in the hope that today signifies the end of an era, that this 16 years of dictatorship. We are happy in the hope that today optimizes a new beginning, a renewal of our hope and dreams that from henceforth, our people shall be governed not by arbitrary rule of the jackpot, but by the rules debated and agreed to by their own elected representatives and government. This was the dream of the founding fathers of Nigeria 40 years ago. As you all know, 
the dream evaporated 33 years ago when the military struck. But thank God, military rule has become intolerable worldwide. Democracy has become a global fashion. And thank God, we have become the torch bearers of the new political spirit, the embodiment of the democratic aspiration of our people. As flag bearers, we are not unmindful of the heavy burdens and responsibilities that we carry. We are not unmindful of the huge of expectation of our people, young and old, man and woman, able and disabled. Now, are we unmindful of the mystery and poverty that the generality of our people has had to endure for almost 40 years after independence? Our goal, as the prophet of old commands, is to lighten the burden of our people, alleviate poverty by providing jobs for our youth, houses, secure food, water, good roads, and creating efficient mass transportation systems, industrial development and providing life more abundant for our people. I must applaud the effort of my immediate predecessor, Brigadier General Mohamed Bamawa, on how he has handled the whole of these challenges, but a lot more need to be done. And I must say quickly that the tax are held are not those that can all the accomplishments on a quick fix arrangement. The problem and can possibly overwhelm the unprepared, but we are ready to tackle the problem head long. We are ready to take the first strategic steps to address the overwhelming problems of abject poverty and hardship in our state. As much as we are prepared, we are also aware of our limitations as a government. We cannot do it alone, and we do not have all the answers. We seek, therefore, the cooperation and collaboration of all citizens of Lagos State, market men and women, laborers, artisans, professionals, and organized private sector, local and foreign investors, public officials, opinion leaders, the federal government, the global financial institution, and non-governmental organizations. We should remember here that as we take on the mantle of leadership today in Lagos State, General Lucia Kumabasojo is equally assuming office as the democratically elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We wish him and other colleagues successful and positive, remarkable tenor. It is the prayers of all Nigerians that we will all cooperate together and deliver in our promises to justify the high expectations of our people. Fronting our people, on our part, we are determined to make a statutory difference.